Okay, let's go to number seven. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Now we're going to see that the first four Beatitudes, that was for your own, for our own spiritual walk, our own personal spiritual walk with the Lord. He, the first four, the Lord is telling us, hey, this is for you. This is for you. Now the next four are going to be the outward of what we learned on the first four. It's an outward showing on what we just learned. And merciful, merciful means a genuine compassion. It means pure and unselfish motives when they do something. To reach out and help others. That's having mercy. We can see by the scriptures that the religious leaders back in Jesus' time, they didn't have no mercy. They had, in fact, they had no part of mercy. They were proud and selfish and judgmental. I mean, you read the New Testament, that's what, how the religious leaders are. That's what you found the way they are. The more Jesus showed mercy, the more they wanted to kill him. Because they, they didn't show mercy to the people. They condemned the people. Where Jesus showed love and mercy to them. You know, and this is how we need to learn from Jesus and not from the religious leaders. Well, the religious, like I said, the religious leaders back then, they had no mercy. In fact, they justified their lack of love and mercy under the deception, deception, the, the appearance they had of their duties. You know, they hid that love and that mercy because of, of their, their, own, their own traditions. They hid that love and that mercy. They didn't even show mercy to the parents. And I'm going to show right here in Matthew chapter 15, verses 1 through 9. This is what the religious leader, okay? These were religious leaders. <clears throat> then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress, transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. You know, right here, they didn't even hide the fact that Jesus' disciples... Uh, offended their traditions. Their traditions. Because they said are. They weren't even hiding that from Jesus. They said they're, they're offending our traditions. <laughs> These men, traditions, they felt, I mean, they had to. They had to felt that their traditions were superior than, than, than the Word of God. Uh, just like today, you know, we have religions where Tradition goes over this. It goes over this, and we know. But I'm showing here that here it is. The religious leaders were saying, "Hey, they're sinning against our traditions," mm -hmm. and they're speaking to Jesus, Son of God. You know, in verse three, but he answered and said unto them, "Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your traditions?" So Jesus totally ignored their question. He totally ignored what they asked. Because when men try to put themselves over the Lord, Jesus is not even going to mess with it. He just he didn't even pay attention to that. He, he went straight. He went straight to the problem. He said, why are you disobeying the commandments of God? By your tradition. So he, to, he totally went straight to the problem. He said, why are you disobeying the commandments of God? And in verse 4, For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curses father or mother, let him die the death. Now, we know that the Ten Commandments, Exodus twenty twelve says, Honor father and mother. That's one of the Ten Commandments. But also, in Exodus twenty one seventeen, it says, He that curses father or mother, let him die the death. You know, if we were to live by the commandments of God, the, all these teenage problems we got, they wouldn't be here. You put one teenager to death for disobeying his parents. You'd have one. All you would need is about one every year. <laughs> yeah. These teenagers would straighten up real quick. Oh, yeah, they'd real quick. <laughs> we wouldn't have this, these kind of problems. And, and also the Bible says, off this subject, but the Bible says, if a man raise a woman, he's to be put to death. Not put in jail, or maybe later on get out of it. If we were to live by the commandments of God, eh, this world doesn't. So we have to live... Lord, the Lord's commands, if we would only live by them, if Christians would live by them, you know, because like I said, I keep saying it over and over, we're not of the world. What's going on out there is totally different from what should be going on in, in the church, in the Christian world. 
And in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, it shows how important it, God's authority is. How he, this is His chain of command. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, it says, But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. This is God's ch- chain of command. And we, we've gotten away from it. We've gotten away from it. Little by little, and everybody knows it, the world starts doing this, and about 10 years later, the church is accepted. Uh, well, you know, women, uh, worldly women, you know, it's definitely independency of men. They don't need men. They have babies without men. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the way the world has gone. My wife right here, she makes a whole lot more money than me. She's a lot smarter than me. But ask her who the head of the house is. She, if, she can take care of herself. You know, she can. She don't need me. But guess what? She knows what the Word of God says. She knows, and she obeys it. I'm not saying she's perfect. You're willing to take that role. You know what? You, men ought to not think, oh, well, I'm the head. Huh? Men, it's not easy being the head. It's not being the easy head. Because you have... You don't take it. Right. You're right about that. So it's not like I'm the head, but they don't take on the responsibility that comes with it. And in verse 5, it says, But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by, by me. Jesus says, You say, the religious leaders say, It's okay to give to the church, but you don't have to help your parents. That's what he's saying. This is not honoring your father and mother. This is not honoring your father and mother. Family comes before the church. Before the church. I didn't say before God. Family comes before the church. I'm sure most preachers, they wouldn't like what I'm about to say. But if your parents need help, if they need help, you better, give, you better help them financially before you give to the church. A lot of preachers, uh, they're in it for the money. I mean, they're going to pass that plate. And they might pass it more than once. You know, but right here, the word of God and the Lord, you know, the Lord is shown here, you know, you have no mercy. I mean, you're thinking of self. You're saying it's okay not to help your parents as long as you're giving to us. This is what it's saying right here. Especially if your mother's a widow. Because the tithe money, which I'm going to get on that in a minute, the tithe money is to help the widows. Widows do not have to go out and find women. If she was, if I was to die, she, she works. And she works only because we don't have kids. If we had kids, she would not work. Okay? But because it was just me and her, and we don't have children, that's why she works. But if something was to happen to me, and she became a widow, it's the church's responsibility, with the tithe money, to take care of her. And orphans, too. And the orphans. That's what I'm saying. I'm going to get on that in a minute, but I just wanted to point that out real quick. You know, not only help your father and mother, but especially if the, father, if the mother is a widow. Especially. The tithe money, listen to me. The tithe money was not to make big, fancy churches. All right? It was to help people. It wasn't made to build nice buildings. It wasn't. That's not what the tithe money was for. Tithe, I'm now, serious. I went, not to this pastor, but the Baptist church I went to, I went to him and said, you know, I've read the Bible, and from what I'm reading of the Bible, the tithe money is for three things. And they had paper longer than this like three pages of things they did with the tithe paid with the tithe and I took that paper in there and I said look I said all this I said none of that is on here what the Bible says and uh, he says his response to me was y'all put that on there y'all voted to put it on I didn't say anything else after that but I did think in my mind I was like you are the pastor here if we're doing something that's not right that's not biblical. It's you're the pastor. The Lord has made you the shepherd over these people. You should be telling us that. Verse 6. And honor not his father or his mother. He shall be free. Thus have ye made the command of God of no effect by your traditions. Again, he's saying, by your traditions, you have put them over the word of God. Chapter, uh, verse 7. He says, ye hypocrites. You know, the Lord didn't have no problem calling someone a hypocrite, especially a religious leader. The Lord told it like it was. 
I mean, he told you. I mean, he, he plainly said it. He said, "Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, Now listen, these people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for the doctrines of the commandments of men. Yeah, we're still there today. This is the very reason the Lord said in Matthew's, this is he's talking about religious people here. In Matthew's, and we I know we've all read this in Matthew's chapter seven, verses twenty one through twenty three, it says, Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name has cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquities. Just like these religious leaders here. And we have people today like that. With their mouth, with their brain, but not here. You know, there's a lot of people who are, there's a lot of people who are knowledgeable on this. Knowledgeable. But it's all here and not here. So, there's going to be people like right here, they're going to say, Lord, Lord, but he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. That's why we need to watch out. There's wolves. Wolves have the knowledge of this, but they don't have the heart. The churches of God, we're allowing little by little sins to come into our church. Little by little, we're allowing sin to come in here. I mean, there's churches out there, they allow homosexuals to be preachers. So, we, I mean, I'm not pointing one church out, I'm just saying churches. Uh, women pastors. That's definitely against the Word of God. Women pastors, but we're allowing that to come in. We have religions that if, if you want to uh, get baptized, you have to be a member in that church. If you want to get baptized, you have to be a Baptist. Now, this church hasn't done it, and I don't think the pastor, I don't think he'll do that. But I have been in another Baptist church where the, uh, a friend of mine got saved. He wanted, get, he wanted to get baptized. I said, well, come to the church. Or, you know, I didn't know the pastor that well. But I, I thought it would be all right. So I took him to the church, and the pastor told him, he says, well, you'll have to join the church. And he said, well, I don't want to join the church. I just want to get baptized. Because, you know, just you showed me salvation, and I've, I've accepted the Lord, and I want to get baptized. He would not baptize them. Now, stuff like that, stuff like that, that's some things that, things like that will keep you from going to church. Uh, the tithing, passing the plate. You know, passing the plate to me, we're just asking for money. You know, tithe, we should tithe, but I've been to churches I've, I've, in, in other places where uh, they have something off to the side where you can put the tithe, if you're tithing, you can put it in there. They don't pass the plate. Because one thing, there, you know how many people don't come to church because they can't put nothing in the plate? Or go to Catholic church. So church when we do things like that, that hinder people, <laughs> when we do things that hinder people from coming to church, we shouldn't do it. It's not biblical that we, it's biblical to tithe, but it's not biblical to stop the service and pass the plate. No. I'm sorry, but it, it's not. And, you know, these traditions of men and everything, uh, it's getting in the church and we're letting it come in little by little. And, and, and not only that, the, too. the Baptists right now, we're in, inside the Baptist convention, we're, we're having arguments. Is the Word of God infallible? I mean, in the Baptist church, it's going on. Is the Word of God infallible? That's what separates That's us a discussion that's going on. That's a discussion going on with the Baptists. We're letting these little sins come into the church. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6, Your glorying is not good. Know ye not... That a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. What he's saying right here, you let a little sin in, it's going to ruin the whole. It's going to ruin the whole thing. And this is this is what the not just talking about the Baptists now. I'm talking about other churches also. Little by little, we're allowing sin. That book, Seduction of Christianity, by Dave Hunt. That's what he talks about. Little by little, we're letting things into the church. Little, but what it says here, a little bit will just ruin the whole thing. Now that was all, we're talking about mercy. See how if you let traditions and religious leaders, they can change. They can, they do not live by the word of God. And mercy is not in there. They didn't have no mercy. They showed it plainly with, with uh, them plainly saying, hey, 
You give to us first before you give to your parents. Take care of your parents. That's not the mercy God, the Lord wants us to have. We're talking about mercy right now, and there is there's really no true love or mercy when you live by traditions. When you when you go to church and you're living by the traditions of the church, you're not going to learn what true love and true mercy is through traditions. And uh, the devil the devil is the one who likes traditions in the church because he knows the power of God. And he knows if we were to move in the Spirit with that kind of love that the Lord has, that kind of mercy that I'm going to be shown that the Lord has and wants us to have also, ooh, that could be very powerful in the church. But he, the, the devil likes traditions. That's his thing. And a lot of our churches are making them happy. Well, well, this teaching here, I'm talking about this, and I have a teaching that I did on the book of Galatians, and I talk a lot about traditions in that book, in, on that teaching also. Jesus was condemned and crucified for the love and mercy that he gave us, that he gave everybody, for, be, for having love and mercy for people. Having mercy is not just praying for people. When you have mercy and you see someone who needs help or prayer, it's not just praying for them. Mercy is a physical thing. You help people. If you're able. You know, some people are unable to help financially or whatever, but they can sure pray for them and be there to talk to them or just be there. Because, uh, like I said, there's a lot of times, uh, as, as I learned in the book of Job, it's better when you don't say nothing yeah. than to say something that you're not really being led by the Spirit to say. Helping, you could help the lonely. If they're lonely, you know, just be there for them. There's many ways. If uh, there's many ways to help people, there's many ways. Those who need love, if you're a born again Christian, you got a lot of love. We got a lot of a lot of love to give. Mercy helps, and it just doesn't watch. It does just doesn't say, "Oh, I'll pray for you," which is good. But you want to do more than that. You don't want to just tell a person, oh, I'll pray for you. If you know what the problem is or whatever they need, you know, prayer is good, but it's a physical thing. You know, just being there, like I said, just being there, give them a phone call, you know, something like that. Mercy helps and not just watches. And mercy helps in secret also. Just like in Matthew 6, 1, take heed that you do not your arms before men to be seen of them. That's the way we ought to help people. When we give people, you know, help, love and mercy is almost about the same thing. So when we're helping someone, whether if we see uh, someone in need of, maybe it's financial, financial, don't blow the trumpets like the, the religious people did. You know, look what I'm doing, look what I'm giving. You know, we do our, we, whenever we help people, we do it in secret. That's the way the Lord said to do it. And don't be like the, and don't be like the world. The world likes to do it for show. Again, like, look what I'm doing. That's, that's, and they also, when they give to, to a cause, like maybe the Jerry Lewis, stuff like that, you know, uh, a lot of times people give to that. Why? For, ta for tax purposes. You know, they're expecting, the world does it expecting something in return. That's why the world gives mercy. The world has no mercy. And if they do have mercy, they're looking for something in return for it. Jesus was the most merciful guy that walked the earth. Jesus was. This is what Jesus gave the lost people. Now, he did feed them, and he did heal them, but he didn't do it because they were poor and hungry. He was doing it because he wanted to show the power of God. In Luke chapter 4, that's not on your papers. You're going to have to write it down. On Luke chapter 4, verse 18, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. This is why Jesus came down here. And guess what? This is our ministry also. This is what we do. This is our ministry down here. This is the kind of mercy we show. Because these people, everything they're saying right here, these are the people who need mercy because they're lost. So part of showing mercy is, is witnessing. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get on that 
in coming teaching, so I'm not going to say too much about it right now. But this is what the Lord said we were here for. Not only him, but there was, it's our ministry also. We're, we're supposed to preach the gospel. Help the brokenhearted. Bring deliverance to those who are captive. To help those that are blind to see. That's, that's our responsibility. That's our ministry. Jesus said, this is what we do to the lost people. This is for the lost people. And it says that you'll obtain mercy. The last part of the blessed. It says that you'll, you're going to obtain mercy. Well, who are you going to get it from? You're not going to get it from the world, like I said just now. You're not going to get mercy from the world. You get it from Him. The Lord said, I'll give you mercy. So it's not like, well, if I'm, if I'm giving mercy to these people, I should get mercy back in return from the people. No, that's not going to happen. No. No. This, the Lord says, I'll, that he would, be, he would give us the mercy. Jesus gave, like I said, He gave the most mercy than any man. And look what they did. They hollered and crucified Him. Hmm? So the world doesn't know anything about mercy. People think that if you give mercy that you're going to get it in return. It's not true. Only from the Lord. Only from the Lord you'll get true mercy. Now we have people who are morally good, morally good. You know. Now you might get some mercies from them, maybe a little. But true mercy... It only comes from God. The scriptures don't, they don't teach, they don't, the scriptures doesn't teach that we're going to receive mercy back from the people we are merciful to. You understand? This is not the world's way. The Lord is saying, you give mercy and I'll give you mercy. That's what he's saying. This is who we expect it from. In Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassion fell not. You know, he could have just done away with us after Adam and Eve. He could have done that. After Adam and Eve sinned, he could have just done away with us. And he would have been just. If he would have wiped out Adam and Eve for what they did, he would have been just at doing it. Because we do have a just God. He would have been right if he would have done away with us. But he showed us mercy. Sinners. Take how we are. Because me, myself, I'm like, Lord, I can't understand why he gives me so much mercy. Why he gives me so much grace. Forgives me. And you take this world, when Jesus was walking here on earth, and what they did to him, he still gave us mercy. He still gave us mercy. After what we did to his son. And I say we, because we were no different from them people over there. The difference between us here in this room and them is we got born again. But if Jesus was to come today, the same thing would happen to him. Same thing. The lost people out there would holler, crucify him. The world has no mercy. Only the Lord gives mercy. Titus 3.5 Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy, His mercy, He saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. It wasn't because of the good we did, works. He didn't give us mercy because of our works. That's not why we received mercy. It wasn't because uh, we spoke in tongues. There are some of us who believe that. You know, that's the way to heaven is you have to speak in tongues. We're out here in this room. We don't believe that. But there's people out there who do believe that. Well, the Lord didn't give them people mercy because they speak in tongues. He didn't give anybody mercy because they got water baptized. Like some religions, same thing as tongue. Some religions say you have to be water baptized. Yeah. He didn't give us mercy for that either. He don't give mercy because you come to church every Sunday. The Lord gave us mercy just out of the, out of the love He has for, the, for us. That's why His mercy came to us. Not for anything we did. He gave us mercy. This is... This is the Lord. This is the kind of mercy the Lord is expecting from His children, us, to give also. And mercy is for those who want it. We we wanted it when we got born again. We wanted this mercy, you know. But the lost people they don't want this mercy. They don't want the mercy from the Lord. Their eyes are closed. Their eyes they're blinded by the devil, and it's going to take the drawing of the Holy Spirit. To reach them, 
And the only way they're going to be drawn by the Holy Spirit is by born-again Christians going to them in the Spirit. In the Spirit. They're drawn by the Spirit. That's what the Bible says. If you go to them with a program where it's step one, step two, step three thing, you ain't going to reach them that way because that's a program. That's not the Spirit moving in you. You're following a step-by-step thing. That's not at the Holy Spirit. They're drawn by the Holy Spirit. So if you go to a person and you let the Holy Spirit speak through you, this person can reach the Lord. All right, you understand that? It's not a program. We got enough programs. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 and 32. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and glamour, that means to be loud, and evil speaking, put away from you with all malice. Why do you think the Lord put that in there? He had to tell us this. Yeah. He had to tell us. Th- verse 32, And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Just like God has given us mercy, we should see how important it is that we should give mercy also. Did we deserve it? No. no. So should we give mercy to those that we think don't deserve it? Yes. Let me just say this. When you're doing it by the Spirit, it can be done. When you're not in the Spirit and you're trying to do it, you're gritting your teeth. I can do this. And you're gritting your teeth. You're clenching your fists. <laughs> and you're, going, you're telling yourself, I can do this. That's not in the Spirit. If that's the way you're trying to do it, you're not going to do it. Let the Lord, let the Lord speak to you. I mean, I know by experience, Lord... <laughs> Touch me, do something, because I've been in them situations where I, and but he did. So I know he can. Well, I know all of us in here have felt that way, but uh, but we get we do have to remember who we are and who we represent. Remember, we're witnesses whether we know it or not. I mean, people are going to look at us. If you claim to be a born-again Christian, I, and this is one thing I hate, I hate it when I see people out there saying they're Christians, but they they live in like lost people. Yeah, you see, okay. you see the carpet. And I, I really hate that. <laughs> Christians, people who say they're Christians need to live like Christ. Yeah, yeah. We need to live like Christ. If you're not going to live like Christ, then don't say you're a Christian. And I'm not saying don't say you're a Christian, okay? Don't, don't think I'm saying that. But I'm just saying we 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 uh, we got to remember who we are. Jesus was 100% man. You're not. We're not looking at Jesus as God on earth. Jesus was, when he was there on earth, he was man, 100% man. If Jesus could do it, and then he gave, us, he gave us himself to come and live in us, then we can do it. It's, just, it's up to us. We choose whether we want to use the power of the Holy Spirit or not. We choose. Because it's there. It's in you. And you can do it. In Micah chapter 6, the Lord is asking Israel, He's saying, What have I done to thee for you to treat me this way? God says, look all what I've done for you. He's telling Israel, look what all I've done for you, and why are you treating me this way? And the people, and the people answered and said, what kind of offering or sacrifices can we make for you? And the Lord said unto them, in verse 8 of, the, of Micah 6, verse 8, He said, He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doeth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy. And to walk humbly with thy God. This is what this is what the Lord said. He didn't say anything. Okay, I want you to sacrifice this or sacrifice that. Or give this offering or give that offering. In verse 8 he says, I, I, What I want is for you to love mercy. And to walk humbly with me. That's what I want. I know you haven't been listening to me. You've been away from me. Which we, you know, we all we know all the stories about Israel and how they didn't listen, disobeyed God and all that. But right here, he said, "I want you to love mercy." He wants us to love mercy, not just have mercy. You know, I've been talking about we need mercy, but right here, God says, "And to love mercy, not just have mercy, but to love mercy." You may ask, "How can I love mercy?" Well, you know how you can love mercy if you've been in this class since the very beginning. And it's touched your heart. If the Lord has spoke to you, that's how you're going to love mercy. Because, like I said, you realize how poor in spirit you are. You realize how you have to mourn on sin. If you're sinning because you don't have mercy for this person and it's sin, 
that that should make you should mourn over that. So if you done if you've listened to the first four, this is how you can love mercy. Is by starting from number one, blessed are the poor in spirit, and then work your way down. And by the time you get down to here, you can have, you can love mercy. Now this class, <laughs> amen. This class, the Lord has shown, and He's using me. He's using me. It's not because of me. All right, I don't. I always put myself aside. Always, and I always ask the Lord to to take over my mouth, take over my lips, and let Him say what He wants you to hear, not me. All this, this studying, the Lord puts it on me. It's not because Jesse is. is Remember, I'm just like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm mud. The Lord is still molding me. But all these, what he's been teaching us these last eight weeks, if we go by them, right here, you want to know how to love mercy? Follow the Beatitudes. Follow the Beatitudes and you'll love mercy. The scriptures show how mercy is done. And we're going to start with Luke, uh, Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 28. <clears throat> well, it's more than that, but I'm going to start with these. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is it written in the law? He's talking to Jesus here. How readest thou? And he answered, said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. This do and thou shalt live. Do. A lot of times we see this word do and we don't see it though. We read it do but we don't comprehend what, what does do mean. It's a verb. <laughs> do many times many times the Lord says do do this or do that but we don't get, we don't really take in the word do but right he says do this and you shall live this this man got the answer right but you don't go to heaven for knowing the right answers you go to heaven for doing what God commands all right he was just like the beatitudes when I did them at home I had one of the guys there. Uh, he knew the Beatitudes. I mean, he could name them all. Bless all blah, 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 blah. He knew them in order. And I said, well, that's good. I said, what do they mean? No, I don't know. I said, well, how is that going to help you? Knowing the order of the Beatitudes, how is that going to help you walk with the Lord? Well, I don't know. I just know. I said, well, memorizing what the Scriptures say and not do doesn't do you no good. Uh, I had a niece she was memorizing the, the books of the Bible you know from Old Testament to New Testament and I said well, you know, that's good that's good I said well, you know you, you really need to know what they say the books say so what if you, if you can stand up here and say Genesis through Revelations and say them in order Why, what's that get you how's that going to help you <laughs> that's why I say this right here this guy knew the answer you know the answer but you're not doing it verse 29 but he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus and, and who is my neighbor if you notice that the man wanted to justify himself how many people do we have that way today well I think I'm going to have him because I because they think whatever they're doing, whatever it is, that's the way they justify themselves, and that's why they're going to heaven. Well, this man here was doing the same thing. This guy from the very beginning, at verse 25, in what I just started, he says, what shall I do? This guy is trying to make himself right with God. Make himself right. You know, what can I do? And then he jumps. He jumps to love thy neighbor as thyself. And the reason he did that was because he knew he didn't love the Lord the way he said the way he said to love the Lord the Lord. So he just jumped he just bypassed that and, and went to love thy neighbor as thyself. And in verse thirty, and Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his garment, and wounded him and departed, leaving him 
half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed him by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. Now there were Jews, these were Jews that passed by him, his own people. The priests, and the, there was his own people who passed by him and didn't do anything. And this Samaritan, Samaritan, which the Jews did not like, didn't like the Samaritans at all, he stopped to help this man. He didn't look at his race. He didn't look at his color. This Samaritan stopped to help this man. And in verse 34, And went to him, and bound him up his wounds, pouring in oil <clears throat> and wine, and set him on his own, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Jesus answered his question, <clears throat> and now he's going to ask the man a question. In verse 36, Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said unto him, Go and do thou likewise. That's what mercy is. Now, let me say something here. These verses here, we had a preacher, I forgot who, well, it wasn't our preacher, but I forgot who the preacher was, came and taught on these verses. And he used them as, as we should give. That's why they have the, I forgot what he called it, but it was, he was using these verses to show how we should help people. Well, the Samaritan, Samaritan, he didn't stop because the guy was poor. He didn't stop because the guy was hungry. Because if he was poor or hungry, why would they stop and rob him? Who robs a, a poor man? He don't have nothing. And if he wasn't poor, then he wasn't hungry. So that's what he was teaching. Using these scriptures showed that's what we should do. Well, this man needed physical help. It was a physical help he needed. So what I'm trying to show here is... This is not the Lord, like I said, the scriptures I gave a while ago, the people we should be helping is the people with the broken hearted. That's who we should be helping. And I'll show more. Some of you might say, well, in Matthew's chapter 25, verses 37 through 40, it says, Then shall the righteous enter and say, This is when the Lord said, I was hungry, you fed me, and you know, all that. And then in verse 37, he said, Thou. Then the child, the righteous, answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Now this is the key right here. This is the key right here. The Lord, is, they're saying, When did we see all this? He says, Verily I say unto you, In so as much ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done it to me. These things we do to brothers, to born again Christians. This is not the world we do this to. He said, If you did it to me, you've done it, that's, you've done it to my brothers. This kind of helping people, this kind of mercy, is for Christians. Christians helping other Christians. And I'm trying to point this out to where, okay, our ministry, our ministry, if we want to help, then we need to tell them about salvation. If you see a man out, uh, man out there on the corner with a sign, hungry, well, the Lord didn't say we had to feed him. No, he said to preach to the brokenhearted, to preach to the poor. We should be preaching to them, not giving them money. That's not going to help them. Because, you know, half the time, well, from what I saw in the news, half of them, those people probably got more money than we do. Around 1 John, now, this one I didn't write down on there also, you're going to have to write. 1 John, chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth him up his bowels 
of compassion from him, how dwell the Lord the love of God in him? My little children, children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed. So the Lord right here again, he's saying to a brother, to brother, to to your family, Christian family. That's who we're supposed to help feed and stuff. And I'm trying to I'm trying to make sure y'all see the difference. When the, just because they have lost people out there that are hungry, that doesn't mean we need to go out there and feed them. Just like the people in India, they're starving. There's no reason for Christians to send money out there because they're starving because they're God. So there's no reason we as Christians should be sending money to people who have another God and their God has told them, hey, don't, these, are, these, are, these animals, these are people reincarnated. <laughs> these rats that are eating the wheats, your wheat, they're don't kill them. So why should we send money over there to help them when they're listening and obeying a God that's not our God? No, no. Because just like at the very beginning of this lesson, there's a great multitude that Jesus was uh, teaching the Beatitudes. He was teaching the Beatitudes to the disciples, but the Bible says, at the very beginning, it says there's a great multitude. And that was a great multitude. He was feeding them. Mm -hmm. he, but they didn't change. Yeah. Except he wanted to try that same, to that same crowd was at, in the city saying, crucify him. So you're not let, you're not uh, when someone believes in another God and they're suffering because that's what they believe, then us helping them is not going to do anything. And this part of this teaching I'm going to do on mercies, we got to hear from God, hear from the Lord when He says to help someone, because we're helping people that don't deserve help. For one thing, if it's on a street corner and you're passing by and you're calling, you give that person don't know nothing about you. So you ain't witness to him. You give him a tract. He ain't going to read it. How many tracts are given out out there? You got a lot of religions, a lot of Christians who hand out tracts. And most of the world already know what these tracts are. They already know what they say. They toss them. They don't read them over and over. So I'm trying to separate the two here. There's a way to help the lost people, but then there's a way to help your family. Just like we're in here, we're family. If I see someone in here that needs help, I'm going to help them. Partly because that's what God told me to do. So physically, there's a line to be drawn yes. in the way you help somebody. But mercy, as far as forgiveness and someone that wrongs you, is for everybody. So <laughs> mercy, <laughs> <I've, clears throat> excuse me. So this mercy that the Lord has shown, yeah. like when, like I said, He was feeding those people, but He wasn't feeding them because they were hungry. He was feeding them because he was showing the power of God. Well, if you might, you know, people might say, well, Jesus fed all those poor people. No, they weren't all poor. It says great multitude. You didn't have a great multitude of poor people. Maybe some of those people were poor, but most of them weren't. And he fed them. He did it because he was showing the power of God. And then this verse right here that I just used about the man that was robbed, he wasn't poor and he wasn't hungry. But they use these verses to show that we should help those who are poor and hungry. But this is not, this, this verse ain't talking about a poor and hungry man. Because like I said, do you rob a poor person? No, they would look for a man who has money to rob. Not a, so this man was not poor. Do you understand what I'm saying? They robbed him because he had stuff. So I'm just showing, watch, the, the, please understand the scriptures that we're reading. If you witness to them and you stand there and witness to them, you know, that's that's what they need. Yeah. That's what they need. As far as money, look, I don't have no money to give you, but let me tell you about Jesus. And if they walk away, your money wasn't going to do anything. Yeah. Yeah. And, but like I said, I showed these verses right here to show you. Jesus has shown us your family, your Christian family. Now those, if they're hungry, give them to eat. If they're thirsty, give them the drink. Now that, he said, do to your brother. Yeah, right. but only to he didn't me. say do it to the world. Yeah, but what if they're not working? What if they decide to be bums? Well, then, then that's why I say a lot of times when we help people, we need to hear from God. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Lord, I'm telling you, the Lord will tell you. He will tell you with His still small voice. He will tell you, I want you to help this person. But if you don't hear from the Lord, right. and I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get deeper into that right there. But this beatitude and the other ones, the beatitudes here. They're, they're the evidence. These are evidence of things 
of a true born again Christian. You know, that moment when you walk down the aisle or when you got baptized, that moment, that's in past. You know, that's not what says you're a Christian. You know, because you walked out, got baptized, that doesn't say you're a Christian. This is what tells you if you're a Christian or not. The Beatitudes. Because your heart's changed. Right. You give mercy to the one who needs it. Because there's several out there who don't need it. You see somebody, okay, today, <laughs> you see somebody out there on the side of the road, needs help, especially women, you better not stop. Well, the Lord says I'm, they, they needed it. No, you better not do it. Unless you hear from the Lord say, saying, hey, stop that and help that. Unless you hear God. I mean hear God. Yeah. Other than that, you better not stop. Mm-hmm. All right? But I'm telling you, there's, there's a time to help and there's a time not to yeah, help. And the Lord will let us know. And, you know, when you hear from the Lord, when you hear from the Lord, mm-hmm. but I'm sorry, but there's people out there who are saying, God told me to when God didn't tell them. Mm-hmm. Because I know there's there's some things that are being done even in this church, and the person saying God told me, but through the scriptures I can tell you no God did not tell you that. I can use the scriptures and show where no God didn't tell you that, but they say that just so they can get your support. Well, what about like you know like the crisis pregnancy centers where they want us to help give um, literally items you know for these women who have children out of wedlock or they just don't have enough money for whatever their needs are. I mean, they're maybe they're not interested in hearing the gospel. Maybe they're just there to pick up some a package of diapers and some, you know, some clothes for their kids. I mean, so should we not give to them? And many of them, that's the reason they are there. We have a lot of missions, I guess you want to call them, mm-hmm. where we're helping the lost people and it's not, and we're wasting our time and we're wasting our money. Just like the United Board of Missions. I went to the United Board of Missions and I wanted to see how they operated. And the guy took me through there. He said, We do this, then we do this, and da, da, da. And we got to the end and I said, Well, what do you, uh, what do you preach to them about the Lord? Oh, we don't do that. We're just here to. Yeah, well, I, I, you know, I, had a, you, I had a fight with the United Board of Missions. The church, I don't know what this church does, but the church I was going to, uh, I took some people over there who need help, and they said, well, we're going to send them to United Board of Missions because we send $100 a month to United Board of Missions. $100 a month. Out of the thousands and thousands of dollars that church brings in, they give $100 a month to United Board of Missions, and when someone comes over there who needs help, they send them over there. That's pitiful. That's not the church. That's pitiful. We're... Don't get me started. Well, it's very interesting. I mean, uh, yeah, but I went. I went there after, after he did that. Yeah. I went over there just to see how they operated, and they were they were they had no problem telling me, you know, this is what we do, and they showed me everything, and but there was no preaching involved. I'm glad you did. When the Lord did feed, when He did help, what did He do? He preached. Mm-hmm. He didn't just do it and walked off. He preached. It makes total sense. Because you want them to know where their yeah. blessings come from. And they won't be in that situation if they trust God to be the Lord of their life. They won't have to be there in those you know, welfare lines. And yeah, well, some of our missions don't deserve to be called missions. They need to be called something else. Because mm-hmm. so mis- mission? missions is to, to reach out and what's, tell what's people. What's the point of having a mission if you're just going over there to do what you can do by yourself or to go over there just mm-hmm. like a little vacation or something? Without going there and preaching the word of God, the world, the world, they have enough. They, I mean, that's why the government helps. The, the, I mean, the government helps yeah. people who don't need help. Right. But that's what our government does. If if the church, if the church used the tithe money, mm-hmm. I, I can't even tell you. I mean, the money would be extremely outrageous if we would use it for what the Lord said to use it for. Instead of the government taking care of these people, we could take care of them right. and preach to them. Right. Show them the way of God. Exactly. But, we're, but well, this is being merciful. I'm just showing the different kinds of mercies we, we have mm-hmm. and, and who are they supposed to go to. Mm-hmm. You know, We have mercy for our family. 
If our family is going through a hard time, this is what the church is for. I'm going to use it again. I've already said it, but in Genesis 3, 23, Therefore the Lord God sent forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground, telling Adam that he was going to till the ground, meaning he was going to work for a living. From now on, you'll have to work to get your fruit, to get your food. Okay, this was a commandment from God. Now, 2 Thessalonians 3.10 For even when we were with you, this we command you, that if any would not work, neither should he... It don't say they. It says, neither should he eat. He's talking about the man. If the man is disobeying God up here... Because God, that's a command for the men. God said, you are going to work for a living. I command you to work for a living, to take care of your family. That's a command from the Lord. And right here, it says, if he don't work, then he should not eat. So when you're helping people, you better hear from God. Because God just might, he just might be ch chastising the person you're wanting to help. Mm -hmm. This person might have done something, mm -hmm. and God's trying to chastise them, and you're over there helping them. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying, please, when you help people, Make sure you hear from the Lord. It's too bad you can't just help the kids because they're innocent. Oh, well, kids, you can help. They are innocent. Not if the parent, I mean, you know what I'm saying, the parents squandering the money and the kids are hungry and they don't have yeah. what they need. Well, you know, if, you're good, if you see the kids are hungry and you give the parents money for food and you know they're going to go out and buy cigarettes and beer with it, right. well, so you know, all you, can, all you can do is pray for them kids. All you can do, but I'm just trying to show you through this mercy. There's people that have mercy too, right. as far as helping them. Right. There's people that we should not have mercy for, as far as helping them. Right. And I used India as an example. I'm using these verses right here as an example. Sometimes it's because they're going against God, and if they're going against God, then we should not be there helping them. Well, the bottom line, the bottom line here, make sure you hear from God mm -hmm. when you help someone. Make sure you hear from God. And I just gave you scriptures to show you why. Mm -hmm. We should Don't think, uh, like it said up there when he said, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me the drink. Well, further on down the line, he said that, uh, well, they said, well, when did we feed you? When did we do this? And, and God said, as we did it to him, we do it to the brothers. You know, he's saying, as you did it for me, you need to do it for your brothers. So that's believers. And then the other verse I gave you, you got them, I hope you read them down. Those are verses shown, brothers, your family mm -hmm. is the ones you help. With this merciful, there's a time to have mercy and then there's a time not to have. There's some people out there who don't deserve mercy. And I just gave you the scriptures, I tried to show you the difference between the two. Because they are Christians who think they need to help everybody. That we're here to help everybody, and that's not so. So what we're here to help lost people for, well, our responsibility to the lost people is to witness to them, to tell them about Jesus.